to get to see what I have been working on for about three years. And what you are looking at is the start of this ministry. Where did we get the name Living Like Lucy? Well, the idea behind it is that we want to seek to motivate and encourage young people to make wise decisions, to choose to follow God using spiritual principles and to use, well, the story that C.S. Lewis wrote so many years ago the Chronicles of Narnia, and use his character, Lucy Pevensey, in order to do so. So, what you have here and what you are seeing are some of the pieces that I have collected over time that represent the story of the Chronicles of Narnia. Now, these pieces are not just any pieces. They're not things you can buy in a store. They're not pieces that you can get anywhere. These are actually set pieces that were used on the films of the three major movies that many of you have probably seen. So you have pieces here from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, such as Aslan's rope that was used to tie him to the stone table. You also have a crossbow from Prince Caspian. You have Susan's Dictionary here as well. Some of these displays that we have here, this is one of the uh, horsemen, the centaurs. Uh, this armor that's back here over there is one of the generals. Uh, the coat there is Edmund's coat that he actually wore when he went into Narnia for the first time. When I received that, I discovered inside the pocket it was still filled with fake snow. Over here we have King Miraz's. If you've seen the Prince Caspian movie, this was some of the armor that he used as well, and some of the clothing that was used by the children to go into the world of Narnia for Prince Caspian. It's true, it's true. It's all in the wardrobe, just like I told you. What's in the wardrobe of Narnia? Yes. Oh, that is true. You do believe in the world of Narnia, but I'm not sure, Lucy, if our audience here believes in Narnia. You guys are just like my sister Susan. She didn't believe. Well, right. Believe. Now, they've also been learning a very important idea called truth. And truth is the overarching idea that they've been learning about. The first thing, I know that you all learned about the difference between truth and error. What's true? What's not true? And then, you also learn about how to choose the truth. But that's not always easy to do. No, it's not. Can you uh, give us an example, Lucy, of maybe a time when it wasn't easy for you to do the truth? Well, whenever I went into the wardrobe the first time, and I met up with Someone and his name was Mr. Thomas, and we had tea and we had a lovely time. And then I came back to this world, and I told my brothers and sisters, but they didn't believe. That was kind of tough, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, boys and girls, when we first hear the story of Jesus, and you hear all about what he's done, how he came to this earth, and did so many amazing things. I mean, think about it. He healed people that were blind. He raised people from the dead. He took a whole group, way bigger than you guys, and fed everybody with just one person's small lunch. And to top it all off, the biggest thing he did, the 
because he died on the cross. He sacrificed his life to take care of our sin problem. But he didn't even stay dead from that. He rose again. What an amazing story. The idea of thinking truth. Thinking truth. Not thinking bad things, thinking wrong things. You have a brother that was thinking some wrong things for a while, wasn't yeah, he? he took, what was that all about? He took some... He took some Turkish delight from the white witch, and it wasn't very nice. No, that, that wasn't very good. She was a pretty evil character, wasn't she? Yes, she was. She was always trying to tempt the, the children and to get them to fall into her trap, but it wasn't a good deal. And Edmund, unfortunately, <coughs> he was swayed by the witch, and he fell into temptation with, as Lucy said, Turkish delight. Now, she won't help me with this, but maybe... <laughs> There's a couple of you that don't mind being Edmund for a minute and having a piece of Turkish delight. Is it good? I didn't get Is it good? 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 It's kind of like a jelly bean almost. It's, it's really a candy. Now, let me ask you about candy for a second. Candy's good, isn't it? We yeah. like candy? Now, I'm sure a lot of you go to Now, I'm sure a lot of you get a lot of candy like at Halloween. But what happens if you eat all the candy at once? Well, I hope not. How about here? Does this, this get to bother you sometimes? Yeah. It's not necessarily a good thing. And that's what Edmund learned. Edmund realized that the Turkish flight was not a good thing for him. And he had made the wrong decision. You know, every day, boys and girls, we have to make decisions. Decisions that affect our lives. We have to spend time, just as Lucy did with Aslan, we have to spend time with the Lord Jesus in his presence. Now, what are some of the ways that we can do that? We can do that with going to church. Is that what you're going to say? No, um, read the Bible. Read the Bible. That's another way you can do it. What else can you say? Pray. Pray. That's a very good one. There's many ways that you can grow closer into the presence of Jesus and therefore be stronger to resist temptation like Edmund. Because we also have some protection. Like soldiers. In a way, we would call them angels. They guide and watch over us and protect us, keep us from the harm of the enemy. And we also have a weapon. We have some great weapons. Like my dagger. You do have a dagger, don't you, that Father Christmas gave you? Yes. Now, Lucy has that one, but I think I've got one even better. Ooh. Now, this was the one. This is a copy of the one that Peter had that he fought with when he was in Narnia. There's a verse in scripture that says that it is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Can you believe it? Now, in order to think truth, we have to keep our head protected. We have to keep this area protected. Now, in battles, the way we do that is with a helmet. So let's see about some helmets. Aslan's army always needs a few more helmets. Do you think we get Maybe we could use a helper or two to display some of our helmets. Now what's great is some of these are for the little dwarfs that were in the movie. And they were probably about your size. So, these first two are the dwarfs. So let's get two dwarfs up here. Alright, I'm going to get this guy right here. Come on up here. And Lucy, why don't you pick one? We'll pick some boys for this one, and then we'll get some girls for the next group. The reason we did this is because you girls have already had long hair. It's much funnier if we have... Now, here, Lucy, why don't you take this one right here. You go with that one. I think the hair color will match a lot better. Alright. So, we have the red dwarfs. The good thing, Dominic, is you're on the good side. The red dwarfs are on the good side. Unfortunately, my friends, you're a black dwarf. You're on the side of the white dwarf. Uh. Yeah, for everything you've been wearing this week. Okay, let's turn it around this way. There you go. Oh, all right, turn around. 
that's the big on you. But we can still see. Now, here's the difference. Okay? The one Gunner has on, it's made out of steel. Okay, this one? I don't plastic. feel anything. <laughs> Doesn't really feel anything. Here's something that's interesting about the movies. When you watch movies, does everything look real? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It does, doesn't it? That's but, not. You, but the thing is, is it's not. It's but not so, real. But the swords are real. Some of it is real, but a lot of it isn't. This looks real. This looks real, but it's not. Lines are fake. Lines are fake in the movie. That is true. This one looks more real, but the thing is, is it's all an illusion. It's not really real. But this is real, these? It looks pretty close. This is more plastic. A lot of the stuff that they use isn't. It isn't really real. What is real, boys and girls, is what we battle with. That's what's real. So one last thing that we want to do. We've talked about helmets. We've talked about swords. But when it comes to really dealing with our enemy, you need the whole deal. Now, when you went up to, in battle against the, the Telmarine and, the, and all the forces of the White Witch, it required a lot more than just a sword or a helmet. Yes, they had to wear lots and lots of things. The breastplate, and they had to wear shoes. The whole armor. Well, I think we should show the boys and girls what it's like to have on a full set of armor. Yeah, so I'd like to try on a full well, set of armor. I've already got somebody in mind for this one. Where's my big guy? Alberto, we needed a big guy for this one. So come on up here. Now, this is all the armor. Now the first thing you need to put on is we need some shoes. So why don't you slip your sketchers off there real quick. And we're going to slip you into some boots here. Let's see if you get in the box. There you go. And we'll get you in that one. Alright, it says in the Word of God to shod your feet for the preparation of the gospel of peace. So we've got these boots on now. Now the next thing the soldiers would have worn was they would have worn chain mail on the legs down here. But um, considering that the boots pretty much cover <laughs> Alejandro's whole leg, we won't worry about the chain mail for the legs part. But we will take care of this body part here, make sure that's protected with this one. Now this is actual chain mail and it is kind of heavy, but we got a big dude up here, so I think you can handle it. So, let's uh, slip this on over here. Coming on there. There you go. And we've got some sleeves here. There you go. Can you get it up through there? Okay. Not too bad. Alright, so he's got the chain mail on. Now there's a lot more pieces though. A little bit heavier, huh? The next thing, he's got to wear the vest. Okay? Now the vest is really heavy. Okay? Alright. Now, Allison, why don't you step up here? And Evelyn, why don't you step up here? Because I think it's going to take two girls. Why don't you each hold a part of it and let's see how heavy it is first. Can you hold it up, the two of you? It's pretty heavy. Now would you like to try it on? I know Evelyn would. This is, ugh. Yeah. Woo. And let go. Let go? Heavy. That's the heaviest clothing you've ever worn, huh? All right, let's let Allison try it on. No, we're not putting it on Alejandro. All right, look at that. It's more heavy than whatever I wear Ice skating, huh? All right, we're going to stick it on Alejandro. Thank you, ladies. All right, got to go on Alejandro here. Okay. Now we got to put on neck. Okay. Got to protect this part. You don't want anything to happen here. That was wrong. All right. Now he's also got the gloves because we can't hurt the hands. Let's see. Oh, this is that hand over there. Let's see this hand. Okay. Oh no. I don't know if we can even get it all the way on. He's Iron Man. So heavy. There you go. Okay. Now we'll only let you. We'll work with just one there. Now here's the helmet. All right. Now the last thing you need to 
her challenge. For you, as you go forth from here, you know what's right. You know what you need to do. But, you need to constantly be working on God's Word. Living according to the principles that we've taught you today and what you've learned here in Vacation Bible School. So that you can defend against the enemy. And remember, even if others think you're crazy, you know what the truth is. Thank you.